Could Rasputin, the Siberian mystic, truly bend the ear of an empire and defy death itself? Rising from the depths of Siberian obscurity, Rasputin became a significant figure to the Russian royal family, assuming the role of a mystic with a profound impact on Serena Alexandra. During his time as a trusted figure to the Russian royals, Rasputin claimed to have spiritual powers and earned the Serena's deep trust. This set the stage for a string of incredible stories where he survived numerous attempts on his life. This video will explore the resilience of a man who, against all odds, appeared resistant to death's many calls, only to meet a fate as dramatic as his life was. Grigory Rasputin began his life in the remote Siberian village of Pokrovskoy. Born to a peasant family in a world far removed from the grandeur of palaces, his childhood was shaped by the rugged terrain and the relentless rhythm of peasant life, where survival was carved out of the harshness of the land. Rasputin married Praskovia Dubrovina, and together they welcomed children, weaving the threads of family life amidst the simplicity of their rural existence. But beneath the surface of this conventional life, Rasputin harbored a restlessness that drove him towards the mystical. Compelled by a spiritual longing, he embarked on a pilgrimage that was to transform him entirely. Through his travels to sacred sites and his experiences outside the bounds of his village, Rasputin developed a reputation as a man touched by divine insight. His self-proclaimed holy status began to attract followers and whispers of his spiritual prowess spread. These formative years were a crucible from which the future Rasputin, the confidant of czars and the focus of scandal, would emerge. His spiritual awakening was not just a personal revelation, but a prologue to the influential and contentious role he would play in Russian history. A role that would see him transition from the frozen fields of Siberia to the opulent halls of St. Petersburg. Rasputin's transition from a Siberian mystic to a prominent figure in St. Petersburg was as gradual as it was striking. Upon his arrival in the capital, his unconventional demeanor and rumored mystical abilities piqued the curiosity of the city's elite. His reputation as a healer and prophet preceded him, drawing the attention of those seeking spiritual enlightenment and unorthodox solutions to their ailments. The more he mingled with the aristocracy, the more his influence grew as did the tales of his supposed miraculous interventions. It was Rasputin's unique blend of charisma and mystery that eventually caught the eyes of Tsar Nicholas II and Tsarina Alexandra. Desperate for hope amidst the ill health of their son, Alexei, and the political turmoil shaking Russia, they found solace in Rasputin's assurances and his promise of divine intervention. His ability to ease the young heir suffering from hemophilia an ailment kept secret from the public eye, cemented his position within the royal inner circle. Rasputin's sway over the royal family became a source of fascination and fear. His counsel was sought not only for matters of health, but also for state affairs, with Serena Alexandra placing particular trust in his guidance. This trust granted him a level of power that few could have imagined for a peasant from Siberia, and it brought him both reverence and revilement from those circling the throne. As his influence deepened, so did the resentment in political circles. Many nobles and politicians viewed Rasputin as a dangerous interloper, a sentiment that would sow the seeds of conspiracy and set the stage for the twilight of both Rasputin and the Romanov dynasty. Even as resistance against him mounted, Rasputin's influence on the royal family stayed strong, highlighting an important period in Russian history. Rasputin's ascent to a position of influence was shadowed by scandal and rumor, fueled by his unconventional behavior and the mysterious aura that seemed to envelop him. His lifestyle, which often flouted social norms and the expectations of Russian Orthodox piety, ignited a flurry of gossip in the salons of St. Petersburg. Tales of his alleged indulgences, from excessive drinking to intimate liaisons, circulated with an intensity that only heightened his notoriety. Critics pointed to these reported transgressions as evidence of impropriety, while supporters argued they were misinterpretations of a man misunderstood and maligned by a society rigid in its expectations. Amidst the scandalous talk, Rasputin's reputation as a mystic continued to flourish. Stories of his healing powers and prophetic visions became the stuff of legend. It was said that with a word or a touch, he could ease the suffering of the sick and bring solace to the troubled. The most compelling of these tales involved the Tsarevich Alexei, 
and Rasputin's reputed ability to alleviate the boy's debilitating episodes of bleeding, a feat that seemed to defy medical explanation. Such accounts added layers to the mythology of Rasputin, a man enveloped in an almost supernatural mystique. Skeptics dismissed these stories as mere superstitions, while believers upheld them as evidence of divine favor. This duality only served to amplify Rasputin's enigmatic presence, making him a figure of endless speculation and debate. During World War I, Rasputin's influence on Russian politics was evident. He advised the Serena on key appointments, leading to the selection of his preferred candidates for important government positions. His intervention in the military's leadership appointments, following Tsar Nicholas II's decision to oversee the army, was a critical and controversial move. Rasputin's sway with the Tsarina allowed him to wield significant power, especially when the Tsar was away at the war front. His input was not taken lightly, as seen when his confidant Boris Sturmer was appointed prime minister. Sturmer's tenure, however, was plagued with issues, reinforcing the belief that Rasputin's influence was harming the nation. His opposition to the Duma, the Russian Legislative Assembly, and his role in its dissolution in 1916 further alienated the political elite and the public. The growing frustration with the ongoing war, mounting casualties and food shortages were exacerbated by Rasputin's perceived meddling in state affairs. This turmoil among the nobles and the wider population led to Rasputin's assassination and signaled the imminent political turmoil that would engulf Russia. Throughout Rasputin's years of influence, his polarizing presence led to multiple attempts on his life, each contributing to the legend of his seeming invulnerability. In 1914, a peant woman named Kionia Guseva attempted to assassinate Rasputin in his home village of Pokrovskoy, stabbing him and leaving him for dead. The wound was severe, but Rasputin's recovery was swift, bolstering the perception of his extraordinary fortitude. Rasputin's ability to survive such a vicious attack only reinforced the fears and suspicions of those in power, convincing them that more drastic measures were needed. The plotting of his death became more frequent, with various groups considering ways to end his sway over the royal family. Tales of poison cakes and assassination plots circulated within the aristocracy, though concrete evidence of these plots remains elusive. In late 1916, a cabal led by Prince Felix Yusupov and Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich conspired against Rasputin, deeming his influence harmful to the monarchy. Rasputin was invited to Yusupov Palace and given cyanide-laced refreshments, which failed to affect him. A frustrated Yusupov then shot him. Despite several bullets and a harrowing night, Rasputin's end came only after he was thrown into the Neva River, with an autopsy later revealing a fatal headshot as the cause of death. This violent end foreshadowed the tumultuous changes about to sweep through Russia. Rasputin's assassination on December 30, 1916, was a culmination of the growing hostility towards his influence on the Russian royal family. On that fatal night, Prince Felix Yusupov and a group of conspirators, which included Grand Duke Dmitry Pavlovich, lured Rasputin to the Moika Palace with the promise of meeting Yusupov's wife. They served Rasputin wine and cakes laced with cyanide, which astonishingly had no effect on him. When poisoning failed, Yusupov shot Rasputin, but even that did not put an end to the mad monk. Rasputin survived and attempted to escape, only to be shot again, this time in the head, and thrown into the freezing Neva River, where he ultimately met his end. Contrary to the dramatic retelling of his death, which often includes the poisoning, multiple shootings, and drowning, the autopsy reports did not mention poison or drowning. The reports concluded that the cause of death was a gunshot wound to the head at close range. The immediate aftermath of Rasputin's death was a mix of relief and apprehension among the Russian elite. While some rejoiced, believing his death would restore the monarchy's reputation, the peasantry mourned him as one of their own perceiving his murder as yet another instance of noble manipulation. The murder failed to bring about the desired change in governance by Nicholas and Alexandra. Instead, Rasputin's death became a symbol of the corruption within the imperial court to the emerging Bolsheviks. They viewed the assassination as an attempt by the nobility to retain their waning power. The event arguably set a precursor for the Russian Revolution, with Alexander Kerensky, leader of the provisional government, later remarking, 
Without Rasputin, there would have been no Lenin. Rasputin's death and the circumstances surrounding it have since fed into the lore of the period, dramatized in films and even a 1970s disco hit by Boney M. The truth of his demise, stripped of its mythological embellishments, reflects the turbulent state of a society on the cusp of momentous change. In the end, Rasputin's mysterious life concluded with an equally mysterious death that shook Russia. His murder didn't just end a man, but marked the nearing end of an era, signaling the deep unrest that would lead to revolution. Rasputin's story, filled with rumors and legends, remains a captivating chapter in history, reflecting the complex and turbulent times leading up to the fall of the Russian Empire.